privilege to me means that my experiences have always been treated as if they were the norm, as if everyone experienced the exact same thing. Privilege is the system always working out in your favor in some way. When I think of privilege, um, I always think about that quote where black women have to work twice as hard to get half of what their male counterparts get. What privilege means to me is pretty much any advantage an individual might receive due to things pretty much out of their control. You have more opportunities because of something, something that, that wasn't necessarily worked for. You didn't necessarily earn. It was more given to them because they were maybe born in a certain skin tone. You could have access to benefits as a result of your sex, as a result of your race, religion, your race, sex, sexual sexuality, your parents' financial status. Maybe they were born in a certain country that had more resources than another. Whether you are like heteronormative or whether you are cis or transgender. Anything like this where the individual pretty much had no control over. And that is all just love is the way you're born. But then can go on to influence their actions or influence their life in a way that could be an advantage to them. The best way I've thought of to describe my experience with with uh, privilege and especially white privilege is if you're on a plane, an airplane, um, you, you turn on airplane mode and that to me is white privilege. You know, it's the ability to be detached to the world beneath you. Things that are affecting so many people all around the world and you're bounded around these four walls and that becomes your safe environment. There's an additional set of obstacles that are removed for you that you don't even notice until you encounter someone else having those obstacles for the very first time. Racism, I've had to learn about. It's not something that naturally I experience. Privilege is also having the mindset of, well, these social issues don't apply to me, so why should I care? White people don't have to care about what's going on to minorities because yes, it affects them, but not in obvious ways that everyone can see. Well, you be surprised to know how much it connects to you. I think it's what a lot of people misunderstand about privilege is they assume that by being told that you have privilege it means that your life is easy, but that's the farthest thing from the truth. Your life is still difficult, but there are additional obstacles removed, especially as it pertains to the legal system. So I actually grew up outside of the Boston area in like a you know pretty wealthy suburb. I guess like I come from a middle-class family. We never had to worry about like finances or food or shelter or like um... It was when I first moved to the UK and um, I started at a new boarding school. That meant that my parents could pay for me to go to private school. I also went to like one of the best public school systems in the nation. And I got all of these new opportunities that I didn't have. I mean I got diagnosed with dyslexia which obviously propelled my education so much. The teachers were pressure to give students more time to like university applications. They had smaller classroom sizes so teachers could give more time to students. If I had a problem with a subject, my mom could pay for a tutor if she wanted to. When I got to college, like I was actually surprised by like how much easier the classes were. Like compared to high school, like college classes were actually easy for me. A lot of my friends were also struggling. And so that's when I realized that I did have that privilege of going to like a really good school. And going from my school in Canada, which wasn't particularly great, just normal state school, I can see other friends that used to go to the old schools with me. I now have the opportunity to go to a pretty great university in London, and they just couldn't even really dream of it. It's not that I work particularly hard over anybody else, but yet, because of my privilege and my parents' status, I had this opportunity. The earliest memories I have of feeling privileged was at primary school, around about at the age of 10, and seeing the discriminatory way that other kids were treated in a way that I was not treated. I grew up in Plymouth and the population are approximately 96% white, so I wasn't exposed to many people of any other ethnic origins. Within my boarding school I went to, it was in like Devon, UK, which is... <sighs> Uh, ballparking it, probably at least 95%, you know, white. In Tennessee, we, we have a lot of racial tensions because there's a lot of people who have Confederate flags, who, who think it's heritage and not hate, and it's everywhere, really. There was three black children at our primary school, and they were all brothers of one another. In my school of, like, 500 kids, there was a single 
uh, black student fail. There would definitely just be jokes aimed in his direction. I had a moment of reflecting on the fact that they might have heard some of the racial slurs that were being said in the playground by 10 year olds. I remember distinctly two songs that went along the lines of Bup Bup Ding Ding 299 in a supermarket working overtime. I asked for an Adidas, he gives me a pair of Nike. I said, fuck you. I wear what I like. I can only imagine how those individuals must have internalized that hierarchy and how that could have affected their esteem later in life. When you're a person of color, you deal with microaggressions. Oh, you don't talk like you're black. Oh, you're pretty for a black girl. And no matter how much you try to adapt, there will always be that kind of label that is attached, um, that kind of stigma that uh, people really can't look past. Why am I having to alter the side of me in order to be accepted by someone who isn't necessarily doing the same. And I think that's where the racial discrimination really takes a toll on you. I have at least three different class presidents in my time in my high school who were student elected and who all had Confederate flag memorabilia like on their like cars, their personal property. And there was a couple of black students at my school who started a petition to get those kids to either take the stuff off their cars or to like lose their, their position as class president. I was young enough the first time that I didn't sign um, because I just didn't understand. And the second and third time I signed, but I don't think I really understood it anyway. And nothing happened. Like it didn't cause any sort of change um, because there were not enough support from the, the authorities, the faculty to create that change. Fairly recently, I was speaking to um, some staff at the waiting staff job that I do. and. Some of the girls were telling me that when they were younger, they thought that the fact that they were black is because they did something wrong. And that when they're older, they'll grow up to become white because they'll be good. That really struck me hard as something that I've never had to undergo. I've never been set back and had my self-esteem shattered on something, uh, what I consider to be rather arbitrary as the color of my skin, but also affects people in multiple different situations. When I would search for roommates, you know, I would be denied based on my skin color or because I wear the hijab. An instance where I was pulled over by a police officer for driving without headlights, and the first thing that police officer did was shine a high-powered flashlight into the car um, at the passenger seat where my friend was sitting. I am white, my friend is black. That officer immediately called him a racial slur. My friend did not say a single word throughout the encounter, but. Regardless of what my friend said, the officer was still treating him with a very undue amount of aggression. I think the only thing that kept that situation from escalating farther was the fact that I was in the car with him, and I was let off of a warning. And you can only imagine what would have happened if my friend was driving alone in his own car. Every single time I've ever gotten pulled over for a speeding ticket, or because I had a headlight out, or anything like that, I've been able to just cry my way out of it. The occasional times that like I've been on a night out and the police have started talking to me for whatever reason. They just immediately think I'm innocent. Recently with um, the protests and um, all the curfews and everything, there's been military in our neighborhood and also um, an increased police presence. I haven't really felt afraid to break curfew, you know, and the fact that I can live without that fear when other people can't just based on the way they look is definitely privilege. The other thing I can think of is another time in which I had gotten into a car accident with another driver. And upon the appearance of a police officer, I was hysterical, I was panicking, I had suffered from a concussion and severe whiplash. Regardless of my behavior, that police officer was nothing but calm and polite to me. Which I think draws up a lot of times in which I've heard people, especially white people, say in response, well, police officers are nice to me. I've had nothing but pleasant encounters with police officers. Whenever I like, interact with the police, you know, I don't really feel uh, scared. I don't really feel um, disrespected. A, a white man who's a cop in the South will see a, a white girl and will want, will protect her. Even I have friends who could be literally just smoking weed on the street and the police will come up to them and be like, oh, could you do that around the corner so you're not on the high street? Now I feel like if they weren't white, the police wouldn't have had that response. I am, have never been perceived as a threat. I feel like if anything, when people see me, they think I'm harmless or responsible even. I've been able to escape 
you know, punishment for things that I've done against the law um, because that's, they see me as something that they should protect. And then after I was brought to court over it, I was the only white person in that courtroom being brought up before a judge. Everyone else was a black man or black woman. And their sentences, despite being very similar to my own, if not identical, were much higher. In some cases, even imprisonment. The judge put out those sentences as casually as he gave me a $200 fine and points off my license. What I did was very minor. What all of these people had done was very minor. This was, this was a civil court. I walked out and paid my fine and left. Other people went straight to prison. What does privilege mean to you?